is up guys, welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony, as you know, car truck SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2024 Subaru Crosstrack, courtesy of Apple Subaru in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So we are in this one today because this is the start of the third generation Crosstrack. You got changes to performance, tech, safety. This thing is all new for 2024. It's got the best all wheel drive system in existence that has been tested the Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive system of course you got excellent resale value as well in typical Subaru fashion so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2024 crosstrack first one being the base starting at twenty four thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars premium for twenty six thousand one forty five sport for twenty eight thousand nine ninety five limited for thirty thousand eight ninety five and lastly the wilderness being the one we are in today going for thirty one thousand nine hundred and ninety five dollars but as you can imagine with all of these trim levels there are a couple different power plants for the crosstrack here first one is going to belong to the base and the premium trim Trim levels that one is powered by a two liter horizontally opposed four cylinder boxer engine putting out 152 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 145 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,000 rpm power being sent to all four wheels through Subaru's legendary symmetrical all-wheel drive system that power being sent to the ground through a linear tronic CVT zero to 60 time coming in at approximately nine seconds flat there with MPG numbers coming in at 27 in the city 34 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel but so then there is that other their engine configuration of course belonging to the remainder of those trim levels that one is powered by a 2.5 liter four cylinder boxer engine putting out 182 horsepower at 5800 rpm 178 pound feet of torque coming in at 3700 rpm again power sent to all four wheels through a cvt zero to 60 time for this one approximately 7.5 seconds so pretty substantially quicker there with mpg numbers coming in at 26 in the city 35 on the highway but again taking regular unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the cross track wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes it's called si drive in typical subaru fashion there's an s and there's an i located on the right hand side of the steering wheel if you were to press that essentially just adjust things like the cvt tuning and the throttle response but i would also mention though there is an x mode with a deep sand and mud setting so if you happen to go off road or in the sand at acetic island and uh in Ocean City, Maryland or something like that, the X mode is definitely gonna help you out along with the very best all wheel drive system in existence. But anyways, we do have paddle shifters with our CVT here today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a couple straightaways. Let's test out the paddle shifters. I wanna see how quickly they're gonna react. Keep in mind, this is a CVT. So technically we're not shifting through any gears, but still kind of cool having them. And then we'll find another one. We'll give this a little bit of an acceleration test and we'll see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, so there is a full manual shift mode for our CVT. Just slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left. It's actually gonna tell you what simulated gear you are in up on the digital portion of the gauges. I have it in that S driving mode. Let's test out the paddle shifters. Huh. Okay, they're not bad. It kind of simulates an automatic transmission. Not really, but kind of. You can definitely still tell it's a CVT, of course, but it kind of lunges you forward. I'll put it that way when you shift through the gears. Uh, again, uh, simulated gears, but they're not bad. And the other reason why paddle shifters are actually a good thing for any vehicle really is you can use them to do a little bit of engine braking. So if it's snowing outside or something like that and you're going down a hill and the roads are covered in snow, rather than actually hitting the brakes and risk sliding off the road, you can simply do a little bit of downshifting and let the engine do a little bit of the braking so you're less likely to actually slide off the road. So did want to mention that as well. By the way, paddle shifters come standard on the premium trim level and up in case you were curious. But now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and find one more straightaway. Let's give back full control here to the cross track and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, from a standstill in three, two, one. Up, oh, auto stop. <laughs> it automatically turned off, so that was funny. Okay, yeah, you're not gonna have any issues merging onto the highway. That's fine. It's nothing crazy, but it was kind of funny. I came to a complete stop. It has the auto on. Uh, and it has the auto on and off system, so it automatically shut off the engine there. So when I actually went to hit the gas, it took a second to start back up. That's how they work, of course, but 
Yeah, so as far, as far as drag racing, if you want to go drag racing at this thing, you might want to turn that feature off. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.4 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.2 inch solid rear discs. As far as the braking feel goes, since there's absolutely nobody behind us here. Whoa, I love it. Dude, that is an excellent braking feel on the cross track. Instantly brings you to a stop. So much on the firmer side of things. I love that braking feel, man. A lot of times, I don't know why, I expected a loosey-goosey soft braking feel on this thing, like an SUV. But I'm telling you guys, that was not the case in the cross track. This thing brakes like a sports sedan, man. I absolutely love it, but Anyways, the touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get an independent strut type front suspension. In the back, independent double wishbone type rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. And in typical Subaru fashion, you also get 8.7 inches of ground clearance. Well, that's a good bit. Of course, we're going over snow and uh, rocky terrain and whatever you wanna do in X mode in the cross track. But as far as ride quality goes, it's actually been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. So I 100% have had no issues whatsoever. As far as steering feel goes, it's actually nice. It's actually weighted a little bit on the heavier side of things, which I like. And apparently for 2024, the Crosstrek now has new WRX electric power steering. So maybe that's why it feels a little bit heavier than uh, previous generations that I've tested. But I do like the little extra weight that you have in the steering feel now. So that's great as well. Touching on cabin noise as we're going two miles per hour here. It's great. It's absolutely wonderful. Honestly, you do get a little bit of the engine noise when you really get on it. But other than that, as far as wind noise goes and road noise that's perfectly fine so absolutely no issues there touching of visibility i could see perfectly fine out the back the second rear headrests are kind of big but other than that yeah this is a smaller vehicle you really shouldn't have any issues there but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 subaru crosstrek all right so here she is you guys the new 2024 subaru crosstrek finished in crystal black silica I'm telling you this thing looks really really good in black no doubt but again completely redesigned for 2024 as always let's go ahead and start with where this one is made taking a look at the van first character is the number four indicating that the new subaru crosstrek is built and assembled here in the u.s i believe the window sticker said indiana but let's go ahead and start up front on this one led steering responsive headlights coming standard on the crosstrek i gotta love that a lot of times that's an added option on luxury automakers like bmw and mercedes i know for example they go for like a thousand dollars but so what that is is when you're going around a bed at night those headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or a possum or an alien or whatever the case so that is definitely a safety feature in itself i love that led daytime running lights do come standard you get the automatic feature of course as well automatic high beams though as well coming standard so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams then when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically then bounce it back up to high beams for you there so gotta love that feature and then led fog lights down below you guys can see those those are going to come on the premium trim level end up i like the design to them too they're different but anyways that pretty much rounds out the front end and of course with the wilderness trim level you should mention there's a bunch of gold accents pretty much everywhere all over this thing so anyways let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right so but now since we are around to the side of this one raised roof rails coming on the premium trim level and up and again with the gold accents for the wilderness trim level rear privacy glass does come standard across the board body color door handles for the premium trim level and up power adjustable side mirrors coming standard they're going to be finished though in matte black for that base trim level a dark gray finish for the premium and limited and then a gloss black for the sport and then kind of like a a satin black i'll call it for our wilderness trim level that we have today and of course you got the subaru wilderness badging found on those front doors as well you got some gold cross track lettering for our specific trim level but you gotta love those all-terrain tires that are on our wilderness trim level that we have here today so speaking of when it comes to the wheel setup 17 inch aluminum alloys coming with the base trim level 17 inch dark gray machine finished alloys for the premium 18 inch aluminum alloys for the sport 18 inch dark gray machine finished alloys for the limited 
limited and of course you have some amazing gloss black alloys for our wilderness actually make that matte black it looks like for our wilderness trim level that we have here today so again very nice looking let's not go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now since we are around to the back of this one all the way to the top matte black shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper fixated to the rear glass gotta love those c-shaped led tail lights leds by the way do come standard for all trim levels across the board so got some added illumination at night there once again you got that subaru wilderness badging found in the rear tailgate there you got some nice gold accents along with the subaru lettering found in that rear bumper as well i think that's pretty cool and then just below it all you will find a single exhaust outlet tucked away there so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next year as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the cross track, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, there is a button on the key fob to unlock it, but ultimately it is a manual tailgate, so simply just lift up on the back there and it's gonna open up for you. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 19.9 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 54.7 cubic feet. There is some cargo lighting back there. There's a couple grocery bag hooks. There's actually four tie-down anchors, so I like seeing that. Cargo cover is gonna come on the sport limited and wilderness trim levels so i am able to show that to you guys there is a rear cargo tray for all trim levels and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you are going to find a spare tire which i always prefer but then making our way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 36.5 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there rear center armrest with cup holders is going to come standard on the premium trim level and up there is no rear ventilation unfortunately and that's kind of hit and miss in this particular class anyways rear usb charging ports though are going to come standard on the premium trim level and up so i did want to mention that but then make our way up to the front seats manually adjustable front seats for the base premium and sport trim levels and then power adjustable front seats for the limited and our wilderness cloth seating is going to come on the base premium and sport leather seating though on the limited i feel like it's kind of like a leatherette combination for our wilderness trim level and i like the subaru wilderness kind of etched into the headrest as well that was pretty cool heated front seats though coming with the sport limited and wilderness overall as far as seat comfort goes, it has been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. So 100% absolutely no issues with seat comfort. But one of my favorite parts and the thing I noticed the first when I first hopped in this one is the steering wheel. Here's why tilt and telescoping for miles. So if you are a large individual like Shaquille O'Neal or George Mearson or Yao Ming or Patrick Ewing or all the other basketball players, this steering wheel telescopes out more than I think any other steering wheel I've ever tested. It goes forever. So if you got long legs and long arms, this is definitely what you want to be looking at for sure. But leather up steering wheel then come in with the sport limited and wilderness. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. Got your unlock, lock, and a button to unlock the rear trunk there. But the unlock button, by the way, is the Subaru logo. And it is all keyless entry with the push button start for the premium trim level and up. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my front of the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee. And so once started up, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is on your right, and there is a small digital display front and center to control what is on that digital display. There are some steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel. Gives you things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty, trip A, trip B, and uh, the SI drive stuff, digital speedometer, so pretty much the basics, which will certainly get the job done in the cross track. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. If you're looking for a power moonroof, that is gonna be optional on the premium trim level and up. Thankfully, we do have it here today, so I got an extra GoPro angle in this video, so that's always nice. Dual zone climate control coming standard for all trim levels across the board. And I like kind of the texturized finishes that they put in this one. Now, a lot of these texturized finishes, they are plastic, I'll say that, but they're pretty cool, like on the doors here. So I like that. It continues on just above the passenger side glove box, but just in front of the shifter, you do have a wireless phone charger I'm looking at right now while I'm charging up my uh, camera battery. So that's pretty cool. Um, surrounding the shifter, it's finished in a gloss black. So I like that as opposed to like a matte black. So well done Subaru for that. And even the shift 
boot itself is kind of texturized. So getting fancy on me, Subaru. But just behind all that, you got a couple cup holders, 12 volt power outlet, your heated seat buttons, of course, electromechanical parking brake. Don't want to forget to mention that. And a good bit of space within that center armrest, more so than I'm used to seeing. So well done, Subaru, there as well. But overall, everything's kind of on the basic side. You do have some soft touch material, and I always like the gold accents that we have in our wilderness trim level, like on the steering wheel. Got some contrast stitching found on the doors as well. So it's not too bad. It would be perfectly fine for me. And I don't want to forget to mention, we have home light controls found in the bottom portion of that rear view mirror for up to three different garage doors. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here. Seven inch color touchscreen display coming with that base trim level. However, for the premium trim level and up, that is gonna give you an 11.6 inch portrait style color touchscreen display. Either way though, you get Bluetooth and audio streaming, you get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, but with the larger screen that we have today, it is gonna be wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. So you gotta love that. And of course, there's a ton of different things you can check out besides that. You've got your climate control information up there. There's a little car icon, and that is where you're gonna access your X mode if you wanted to do that. And of course, you could check out your radio information up there as well. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there are a few of them. Four speakers is gonna come standard on that bass trim level. Six speakers speakers then for the premium trim level and up and then there is a 10 speaker Harman Kardon sound system that is going to be optional for the limited in wilderness and yes we got that option it is an option and we do have it and I'm excited for it so having said that let's go ahead and turn on the radio let's see what we got playing today and let's test out our Harman Kardon sound system that we have with us here today That was pretty darn good. Not as good as the Harman Kardon in that BMW I just tested, but that was pretty darn good. Ton of bass in that sound system. Pretty darn good clarity as well. So yeah, absolutely nothing wrong with that. But anyways, last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put this thing in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so front side side curtain airbags do come standard. Driver's knee airbag up front as well, along with the passenger seat cushion airbag. That last one usually doesn't come standard in most other vehicles out there. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but but also coming standard, of course, a Subaru EyeSight. That gives you adaptive cruise control, pre-collision braking, lane departure and sway warning, lane keep assist, and automatic emergency steering as well. So did want to mention though, to add to all of that, if you were to go with that limited trim level, that is going to add to that blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert and reverse automatic braking then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Subaru Crosstrack, this does have the best all-wheel drive system in existence that has been tested by so many different people in terms of snow, I know, especially. And all of that makes sense because originally Subaru made Subarus for rally racing in the snow and the dirt. So it makes sense that it does absolutely amazing in those kind of conditions. And that is one of the reasons why I absolutely love Subaru as a brand in general, but very fuel efficient for an all-wheel drive system. I'll say that as well. The braking is absolutely amazing such a firm braking field immediately brings you to a stop you also have excellent resale value with this one as well in terms of room for improvement honestly we got the upper trim level so there isn't much i can say but there are two things i can say one of them being i would love to see some customization with the gauges aka a digital gauge cluster. I know Subaru can do it. Every other manufacturer out there right now is doing it, even for their bottom trim levels nowadays. So the cool thing about digital gauges is you can adjust them. You can change the colors, you can change the loadouts, and that would be something I would look for the Crosstrek in the future. And I think another cool thing would be some uh, some basic multicolor ambient lighting. It doesn't have to be 64 colors. It could be like eight or 10 or something like that. But I would have loved to have been able to adjust that to put some gold ambient lighting to match all of our gold interior accents and our wilderness trim level that we have here today so i'm being nitpicky i know because otherwise this thing is pretty darn cool but anyways let me know what you guys think of the new cross track in the comment section below that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in any new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know but i will see you guys all in the next video Stay gold.